Well, hello and welcome back. I know it's been a little while. If you're wondering where I've been, well, one, I moved to Europe. I'm living in Albania for the next year or so. And uh, I also created another YouTube channel. So if you're not aware and you're here because you saw the title of this video and you want to learn more about that channel, you can check out the channel here or it'll also be linked down below. That's where I'm publishing all my kind of or not. Yeah, all my emergency communications content I am publishing occasionally over here just to keep uh, you know, people uh, coming in and also realizing that there's another channel they can go to to get more of that information. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so where did that all start? Well, it did start with my, um, you know, me diving in both feet first into the Meshtastic or lower radio world. And um, I've been doing that for now over two years. And in the process, I've um, realized that there's a lot more uh, mesh communication uh, systems that are out there that may interest other people along with me and they do interest me because I'm exploring all options for emergency communications and as technology has advanced um, and got more affordable a lot of these radios that are technology that used to be you know way outside the price range of most uh, of your average citizens is now become into closer down and I understand a lot of it is still uh, outside of a lot of people's budgets <clears throat> but and we'll talk about that a little bit and in the process I've also learned that there may be some you know misunderstandings of what mesh is it's not mesh tastic mesh tastic is a operating system and firmware that you know allows you to interface and utilize LoRa radios but it, um, it is not mesh in a whole mesh is a you know that's it's like calling you know hey that's a radio and they're all the same no there, there's obviously diff different technologies being used to uh, for all these systems. So I want to just kind of clarify that, point some out to you, some of the ones I've looked into and some that I'm going to or already have purchased and going to be posting future videos on on MCOM Solutions. All right, so <clears throat> Mesh Radio Communications is a network topology that, where each radio or each node in the network can relay data to the other nodes, creating a robust and flexible structure, okay? So this approach is used various technologies as we already talked about, LoRa, and then other waveform technologies uh, are out there and being utilized, uh, you know, currently. So uh, a quick history though, you're gonna hear uh, the word mobile ad hoc network. If you haven't heard that word before, let's kind of help describe it because that really is what mesh communications is as far as I'm concerned. So uh, it's most people say kind of started with DARPA uh, developing packet radio back in the 70s. In the 90s, we moved into like uh, wireless networks, you know, Wi-Fi. And, uh, and that's also kind of in the 90s, mid 90s, when the U.S. Army started using mobile ad hoc networks uh, for uh, communications. There's benefits to all this, right? There's <clears throat> the what we're looking for in this space is something that doesn't require uh, so what we're looking for in the space is, you know, whether you're into emergency communications or you're a government entity, you're looking for a radio or communications ability that doesn't require infrastructure. So you're looking for a decentralized system, and that's where a mobile ad hoc network comes into place. It's self-forming, self-healing. Does that sound familiar? Very similar to, or LoRa has that capability, and so do all these other ones. Wireless networks, same thing. And they're autonomous, meaning they had the capability to understand a lot of these radios are multi-band. They can shift bands. They, you know, using some of their modulation techniques, they're, you know, figuring out the radio is figuring out where it's getting, you know, more res or more interference or, or um, reflection and understand, hey, you may, it'll automatically make adjustments to try to optimize uh, its communications capabilities, keeping those nodes connected to each other. You lose one node and it figures out where the next closest node is, keeping that network entangled, right? And, can, and talking or communi communicating. Um, <clears throat> so modern uh, manets or mobile ad hoc networks uh, are typically very advanced and they're using software to find radios. Uh, they can be integrated into ground and air platforms, right? Uh, the uh, Mesh Rider series from Doodle Labs has a mini version that's ideal for like outdoor drone applications. 
that has the capability of streaming, not only being a communications relay, but streaming the data. Because, you know, most drone operators have a controller that has some capability to see what the drone is seeing. Uh, but think about being able to send that data to other people in high definition. So pretty impressive technology. It does come at a price. Uh, encrypted, uh, you know, AES encryptions, whether it's 128-bit or 256-bit, most of them offer that capability, along with the fact that, you know, a lot of them are using frequency hop spread spectrum and others that make it more difficult to even detect or um, direction find, jam, uh, you know, all that other, everything else just makes it less visible, especially when you're talking things that are in the ISM band, because they kind of, they kind of hide in the noise and um, they're low power. So broadband, broadband capability is not available on all, right? Laura doesn't have that capability. So what are we looking at for some examples? Uh, some of the ones I've looked at and uh, I use right I've been using Laura for over two years now it has <clears throat> it has the lowest end capability in the whole mesh communications world and I know that might upset some people but that's the truth of the fact you're not going to get a highly capable mesh radio for you know 30 to 50 dollars that it's just it's just not the case you did no matter how cheap it's being manufactured in China you're not going to get a very capable mesh radio for that price it's the same thing if like you're an amateur radio guy you know you get your Beofang it has limited it's a basic radio it doesn't have a whole lot of features um, you want a digital mobile radio you're going to pay significantly more uh, than you would for a Beofang so just I know I said that's going to upset some people but it's the truth <laughs> so Beartooth Mark II. Well, interesting story about Beartooth. So Beartooth and Gotenna, both I've noticed, both of them started in the space uh, with their like earlier versions to catered or marketed specifically to the private outdoor enthusiasts, you know, whatever. They weren't marketing them to a government or commercial sector, business sector. They were marketing them to just the average everyday you know, consumer. So, and they just didn't get the buy-in that they wanted. They didn't get the market demand that they thought they would get. And therefore they are, there are later versions like with the Mark II, it is catered more towards a government sector or business sector, professional sector that has a, a better radio budget than maybe your average, you know, Joe citizen. So, um, the Mark II is, has the increased capabilities of being able to send voice, um, location as normal like you can with Allura, and you can send pictures. So definitely has increased capability still in the ISM bands, unlicensed. So everything we're talking about is, is unlicensed. The GoTenna Pro uh, 2X is their latest version. I, it is not available for purchase as far as I can find. I did send them an email a couple weeks back and still haven't gotten a response because I was looking for a price point on those. But they switched from, they originally were only using the MERS bands. Now they have UHF bands also. Um, pretty interesting stuff, but definitely being marketed towards the military sector or law enforcement sector. I'm sure the price point on them is going to be quite a bit higher, but the technology in them is quite a bit more advanced than the original um, Gotennas out there that were being sold to just, you know, hikers and you know, backpackers and things like that. So the last <clears throat> example I'll provide you and is the last radio I looked into was the Mesh Rider series from Doodle Labs. This is the most expensive radio in that I have currently looked at. And however, I'm going to say that it is with the its capability, it is way more affordable than some of the government sector only radios, ones that have, you know, only work in bands that are, that can be used by, you know, law enforcement, military, and so on and so forth. Those ones that are, those frequency bands that have been locked out for just the average person using, whether you got an amateur radio license or not, it doesn't matter. Those are for um, military law enforcement type frequencies. <clears throat> um, those radios are, you know, you're talking some that are you know well over ten thousand dollars a radio, 
these radios are two thousand dollars a piece with all the accessories which is i'm sure it's outside of my radio budget that's for sure and um it's going to be outside of most however once again capability is it a capability you need uh okay maybe do you need the capability of building uh, stream high definition uh, video back to other radios in your network it could be from a ground or aerial platform be from a fixed location like a you know security camera all decentralized encrypted uh, all right to wrap up so it the thing is is the mesh world and mesh communications world is just growing and as this technology is advancing there's other radios out there i'm going to be looking into in the future check out my other channel and mcom solutions and we'll um you can learn more there i will be buying some of these radios not all of them and testing them and using them to demonstrate their capabilities or you know their lack of capabilities for that matter um, so check out my other channel check out our website the ravenwoodacres.com there's a whole uh, mcoms page over there and laura page social media links down below stay tuned for more great videos don't forget to subscribe like and have a great day